cycling is the new golf, as they say. And if we can get more people on bikes, then that's what we want. Welcome to Island Influencers, where we share stories of successful business owners, experienced professionals, entrepreneurs and community leaders based or with influence in the Isle of Man. This podcast is brought to you by Thornton Chartered Financial Planners, because great financial planning has the power to change your life. Now here's your host, Chartered Financial Planner, Sharon Sutton. Welcome to this week's episode of Ireland Influencers. From BMX to mountain biking to road cycling, my guest today is Manx professional cyclist Tom Mazzoni. Fresh from racing in the Tour Series last week and before he lines up alongside Mark Cavendish, amongst others, in the Tour of Britain, proud Manxman Tom joined me to chat about his professional cycling career with Sam Perron, Cornwall's first elite cycling team. Tom explains how he got into cycling and found an elite team to join and some of the challenges he needed to overcome in his career to date, such as also now being a cycling coach and a guide for local companies, doing bike fitting and also being something of a guru on social media and marketing. Hear about his story to date and his big goal for next year. Here's this week's conversation with Tom Mazzoni in episode 58 of Island Influencers. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome you to the Island Influencers podcast, Tom Mazzoni. It's, it's, it's a great delight to speak to you as I see that you're in some hotel room, I think, in the UK, having finished the tour series or somebody's somebody's room. No, I'm, or... I'm actually, yeah, I'm in a spare room of um, a place that I'm renting in the UK at the moment, oh, obviously fantastic. With, with everything. Oh, firstly, thank you for having me as well. Um, <laughs> welcome. But yeah, I'm, uh, yeah. Snuck away in the back room here um, after a week at Tour Series. It's kind yeah. of been my base base here for the last year or so now. Um, the way things worked out with travel restrictions and everything, it wasn't really possible to be based on the Isle of Man over the last 12 months especially. So, yeah, I'm here. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a more of a time thing now. Um, I mean, I've been lucky enough to have sponsorship from the Isle of Man Steam Pack. So the travel is no, it's no stress. I enjoy the time almost the time I get to relax when I go home on the boat and then when I get home is it's nice to be home but the way everything has been the last especially the last month or so for me I've been in France I've been all over the UK it's yeah. just finding the time to come back really and it's, it's not been possible so far no no I'm absolutely well it's it's got to be really hard so well done for doing what you're doing and, and keep it keep it going but I mean, Tom, if, if it's all right for the benefit of our listeners, um, you're probably one of uh, the youngest guests I've had on here, like like Will Draper. Um, so perhaps for the benefit um, of them, you can tell us a little all about yourself and, and where you've got to so far since um, since growing up in Ramsey and going to school there. That's correct. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. We won't go too much into my academic uh, side of things. I was probably... If anyone remembers me at school, I was probably a bit of a nightmare with too much energy, trying to find it, channel it into something useful, I would say. Um, you started yeah, pretty that, pretty early on two wheels, didn't you? Yeah, I suppose that's really how I discovered cycling, to be honest, because from the age of three, I could ride a bike, um, not not in any competitive way. Um, and then my parents took me down to Ramsey BMX Club. And from there, I just loved it and they almost couldn't get me off my bike and it was a good way to kind of channel that energy yeah. into something it's something a great, productive. great little course isn't it and now you see this whole sort of do you think there'll be a, re- a surge in interest since you know the likes of what bethany shriver and kai white and yeah charlotte worthington yeah, was, have all just won gold gold medals haven't they well kai won a silver but yeah it was amazing to watch kind of the olympics and not just bmx but so many sports um but yeah, the, the growth of BMX, it's just such an easy and accessible way for especially younger kids and stuff to get into it. Because obviously, with as you get into professional sport, the cost is a big thing for a lot of families. And I suppose anyone can just go down the local BMX track and have fun. And that's, I suppose, that's where I, I mean, that's where I started. Um, yeah. Just on a, on a little red bmx bike thrash, thrashing it around there and yeah, yeah i suppose look where i am now so yeah yeah that's, that's cool so you did, you did you did bmx first and then you got into mountain biking did you as well you did mountain um, biking so, so yeah i suppose lots of off-road oh, stuff when you're a kid <laughs> that's it yeah 
I mean, from from BMX, I was I was down there every Sunday for I can't even remember how many years even before I started doing the NSC rounds. I carried on with BMX until I was I think around fourteen. Uh, I did the national championships there and got sixth. Wow! And that was that was the peak of my BMX in career, you could say. But then I had to kind of decided or decide where I wanted to channel right um my career I suppose and if I wanted to to be a professional cyclist the road was kind of the way to go for me so were they pretty supportive at Ramsey Grammar I guess at this point to let you go riding your bike when you should have been doing rugby or uh well not all, <laughs> not at all really no oh dear. Um, I, I probably shouldn't say it but they it's funny now because teachers come up to me and go, oh, you've, yeah, you've done so well. Um, it's great to see where you've got. And it's like, yeah, I didn't really have your support at the time, but that's the way it goes. Um, right. And it was di- it was difficult for me as a kid as well, because there was people at Balakameen and they, basically their PE lesson, they were allowed to go out and do two hours of training. Yeah, I had to stay in school and do whatever was end up getting dragged into a rugby game or something like that because obviously I had the energy and I loved sport but it's not really what I wanted to be doing um yeah, gosh and that's, I didn't that's just the way that, it was no. I suppose yeah yeah no I know I know about Bala great for them I suppose but yeah well well done <laughs> I mean so is it same for Leon is your brother Leon he's also a, a fairly handy cyclist isn't he yeah he's he's on a late team here in the UK as well he's actually staying with me at the moment um, right. so it's good it's good to have I mean we've enjoyed a lot of Uh, racing together over the years and there's a little bit of competitiveness there but it's more it's just great to have someone to train with all the time and especially being your brother and then we're not on the same team at the moment but seeing him at the races is always nice and being able to go to the Commonwealth Games together a couple of years ago that was just amazing really um so I'm very lucky in that aspect of things I suppose I know very good so you left school I guess as soon as you could did you or did you what did you do then I left school at 16. Right. Um, pretty much uh, before A levels. Uh, so I didn't I didn't continue on. It's not really the place I wanted to be. Um and, and ended up actually the year I finished school, I did three months in France at the end of that year, racing my bike with a, with an amateur team there. How did you get into into that? Did you just write to join teams or what was the pathway um, so for that? We did the Commonwealth Youth Games. Yeah, that's um, 2011. That's 10 years ago, Tom. That's amazing. That's yeah, like... don't rhyme me. <laughs> Too long ago. So basically after that, um, I spoke to a few riders there who had ridden um, already in France uh, because it, I was right at the bottom age, uh, bottom end of the age category. So there's some guys that had done some riding on the continent before. So I spoke to a few guys and ended up just, yeah, getting a bit of a lead from that and okay. then ending up on a on an amateur team there for the like remainder of the year really right so who, who helped you kind of get there was it anybody local or uh, no it was just one of the other other riders in the english squad yeah okay because you um so you rode for the isle of man did you in the the youth games I, commonwealth youth i did games. yeah 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 and yeah you proud did, you did pretty, yeah you did pretty well though didn't you yeah i think i think my best result there was seventh as well i think so I try. I try not to think back to to that point. It's it's a long time ago now, but yeah, that was kind of from that point. It really kind of inspired me to think this is what I want to do. Yeah. Because um, it was a big event, and although it was home, it felt like a a competition, like out of this world almost. If that kind of makes sense. Yeah, um, it does absolutely. Racing yeah. against nations like Australia and stuff like that, it was kind of just yeah, you know, you, yeah. I want to be like better than those guys I I suppose (laughs) yes I know exactly what you feel yeah yeah okay well so so you went off to to France for three months you got on a a team there got some experience there um then what happened well to be honest it wasn't all plain sailing there when I got to France because um it's the first time I'd lived alone it was in a country where I couldn't speak the language really Uh ah so Uh, the French French lessons at Ramsey Grammar (laughs) 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 how was your French (laughs) I sp- in fairness, I, I did try and I spoke a little bit of French, enough to get by. Ah, good lad. Um, and but I was living in a house with uh, a Greek a Greek rider who uh-huh. spoke English, right? Um, a Lithuanian and an Australian actually. 
He'd um, sort of speak English, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, the racing was going all right. The racing kept me there really for the majority of it because it was it was a rubbish apartment and we had like had a, a gas <laughs> stove that probably could have set the place on fire any, at any time. But yeah, I stuck it out for the kind of three months and like I say, did it for the racing. But then I was at a point there where I come home and I was like, is it really what I want to do? And then I kind of just thought I'll commit. I, can't, I got onto a better team for the next year thanks to the results that I got. Good. Um, but it was in Belgium. Okay. And then once I went to Belgium, I, got, I just fell in love with it again then because yeah. the passion and just everything there was just so cycling orientated that it just makes you want to be there as a as a cyclist, I suppose. Yeah, it gets to share the road with cars nicely. Well, you don't even have to share the road because there's cycle paths there that are completely separate to the road. Okay. So yeah. Yeah, so no, it was good. It, uh, yeah, so when I, when I went back to Belgium, I suppose carrying on the story, I ended up spending three years there in the end, and yeah, that was that was a pretty good experience. Again, just racing as an amateur, but we as a Belgian team, we got to race in some of the bigger races as well. So it's a good opportunity to to kind of raise the profile of what I was doing, and yeah, so life experience of, at the same time. Yeah. So what sort of races? There's a lot of commesses and uh, and the like, or was it? Yeah. So the majority we did was. Commesses, and then there's the Belgian top competition team, uh, Belgian top competition series. Yes, where kind of Belgian UCI teams like Top Sport Blander and stuff could can ride that, which are like pretty high level teams. Yeah, we got we got invited to those, and I think there's about eighteen of them a year. Right, and then at the end of the year, we did a few pro commesses and stuff where we got like the chance to race against Quick Step and stuff like that. So wow, yeah, what was yeah, that like? <laughs> yeah, good. I I always remember the time when I was sitting behind Tom Boone and thinking geez he's big <laughs> and, and I'm just thinking how am I going to hang on to him and uh, yeah I didn't manage to hang on to him for much longer yeah he <laughs> was yeah, a good rider Tom Boone yeah very good rider especially at the time I think he was Belgian champion so okay yeah it was it was uh, yeah and and the famous words from from our DS was just stay behind Boone and you'll be fine <laughs> like, if only it was that easy <laughs> <laughs> how would you describe yourself as a, as a rider what sort of a rider are you are you a, a, a grimper or a um... Um, I suppose I'm a sprinter really it's hard really to specialise in especially what we do in the UK there's such a a broad kind of style of racing that you have to be suited to a little bit of everything right but if there is such a race where it's just a pure sprint then usually I'm I'm pretty much in the set on to be up there, really. Yeah, fantastic. And have you ever done? Have you done much track work, or is is that that not really your? your <sighs> I've never actually ridden, really ridden the track. No, I did a couple of trips when I was younger, but yeah, it wasn't really something that I suppose I really wanted to do. Um, yeah, some people really love the track, but for me, it was just riding around in circles and uh, <laughs> yeah. did like the G force <laughs> off the corner then. <laughs> No, actually, yeah. Uh, the the first time I ever ridden the track um, it was one of the Royal London trips, and I, I was riding at the bottom of the banking, and someone literally just took me out from the top. Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> and I thought, Where did that come from? And then I was yeah. always like worried then that that was going to happen to me. Yeah, but, I'm not surprised. That's not a very nice yeah. thing to happen. No, Splinters no. on your first visit. No, luckily I ended. I just ended up on the bottom. Yeah, and he ended up with all the splinters. Fair enough. What happened after Belgium? I actually moved, well, I come back to the UK, really. And what year it would was, this be? Uh, probably 2016 or 17, I think. Yeah, just to, I kind of got quite a good opportunity in the UK and I thought maybe it's time to just try and earn my money in the UK because this, the UK scene was was thriving at the time, really. Um, there was a really good road and crit series. Yes. Um, the tour series was just starting and it was kind of seemed like a bit of a, a good time to come back really and get stuck into into some racing in the UK which uh, I suppose I've been here ever since now with the odd trip to to Europe Right So you rode with the Holdsworth team I think the last I remember you riding Yeah uh, we rode with the Holdsworth team in 2018 yeah. um, and that was that was a good experience actually and um, that was yeah. my first professional team in the UK I'd just ridden with elite teams before that which was not really a bad thing because 
we we rode all the same races pretty much apart from from the UCI races the ones in Europe but as I say I still well I had the opportunity still to go back to Belgium and race amateur races with yeah. with those teams as well which you can't do with continental teams so I kind of worked my way up through yeah proving myself in the UK um and still enjoying it I suppose and then I signed with Holdsworth and that was definitely more of a job then obviously more money um, yeah mum and dad breathe a sigh of, sigh of relief well I've, I've been very lucky actually because my mum and dad have always supported me and it's the same with my personal sponsors back on the Isle of Man as well that have always kind of helped me to get where I've I've needed to be so I'm very grateful for everyone who supported me including That's my great. parents yeah throughout the year um, I've had to do it the hard way sometimes but I wouldn't change a thing I wouldn't think up until this point um, so yeah I suppose from Holdsworth we got the chance to ride the Tour of Yorkshire and then we went on to, to ride in the Tour Series which unfortunately broke my collarbone there um, oh, no. in the third round. Right. So I missed I missed a big chunk of the season that year and then basically I had six weeks on the Alaman in the hyperbike chamber doing everything I could to get back yeah, yeah. Sure. Re- ready to race and then ended up in China at the end of the year racing over there. So wow. yeah, that, that was a hell of an experience as well. I, I um, bet. Good and bad but no, all all in all, I'd I'd love to go back there. To be honest, it was a great race. China is is uh, it's different. Um, Which part were you in? We flew into Beijing, and then yeah. um, we went up. It's on the border of Mongolia, so it was it was at altitude. The whole race was altitude. Yeah. Um, above two thousand five hundred meters was the lowest we were at, mm-hmm. and the and the highest was like uh, four thousand eight hundred, which is almost half of Everest <laughs> so it was uh yeah it was slightly difficult to breathe there yeah um, but no it was a great experience and it was it was like it was such a different way of living up there we like we would have stage transfers and people were still living um in huts just in the mountains in the middle of mountains like two hours from any civilization wow just with their just with their cattle and that was it that's just the way they lived and it was <laughs> it was a bit surreal to see that but yeah no, like I say, it was it was a great experience for the race and to be there, really. Yeah, no, well done. That's that's great. And you've you've ridden at uh, Commonwealth Games in 2016, was it? No, that was 2018 as well. That actually. was 2018, was it? Where yeah. was that? That was. I was in the Gold Coast. Yeah. Yeah, Gold Coast. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, and then 2022 is going to be Birmingham. So I guess you're aiming for that, are you? Yeah, that's a big goal of mine for next year. I mean, this year. It was hard to really focus on anything at the start of the year because everything was still very up in the air. Um, yes, obviously, of the tour written was a massive goal, mm. but until probably two or three months ago, it wasn't going to happen. No. <laughs> so, um, yeah, obviously, now that that's on the calendar with, with everything else, with yes, the, the new the new world that we're living in with all the COVID tests and the rest of it. Are you coping all right with all of that? This yeah, is... I don't mind it. The first, the first one was a shock to the system, but I've probably had <laughs> about fifty since then. So, right, yeah. how's your nose? <laughs> yeah, it's it's not the best. <laughs> yeah, I've had a, a good mixture of nurses that have had their own particular way of doing it. So, yeah, Th- thank you to them for shoving it so far up my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. I think that's yeah. the first time we've actually discussed noses in that way on Island Influences. And I, <laughs> and I would imagine it's not going to be the last. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, thanks. I mean, that that's kind of almost brought us up to date, but for the fact that you're now riding for Saint Peron um, and that's a Cornish professional team. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So tell us about that. So yeah, it's the first year for the team um, as a professional team. Um, I suppose uh, it's been kind of building its way up it's it's a unique yeah. team as well um over the years it's started from grassroots level all the way up through elite um and obviously now professional team first year of the team we're riding the tour of britain which is starting in cornwall so it's yeah it's really exciting for everyone it's amazing and, and it's in two yeah. and a half weeks time as, as of this time of recording and you're going to be joined by a certain tour de france superstar also from the isle of man yeah Mark Cavendish. Yeah, so that's quite exciting. I mean, it's the last. I think probably the last time I rode with Cav was the Tour of Yorkshire in 2018. So, yeah, but it's great to see him back. I mean, doing what he does best, I suppose. This this Tour de France was incredible to watch him. Um, 
like after the time he's had over the last few years um, with yeah. illness, injury, the rest of it. Um, it was just great to see him back on top, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It is, isn't it? I guess he must have been uh, a big inspiration for you as as with many other Isle of Man cyclists. Yeah, I mean, for me, he was he was kind of my hero growing up. Mm. Um, and it was all... He was always the rider I wanted to be um, throughout his early career when he was so dominant in Tour de France and everything. It was just, yeah, yeah just such an inspiration to to keep riding your bike and thinking that one day that could be you. Yeah, um, absolutely, Tom. Yeah, it could be. But, yeah, but at the same time, it's just it's just great to see him as an ambassador for the Isle of Man. And yeah, it's yeah. incredible what he's achieved in his career. And to say he's from the Isle of Man is yeah, really quite special for us. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. Well, look, if, if that's all right with you, I'd like to just move on to the, the rest of the questions that I ask people in my podcast. I ask yeah, yeah, of course you, yeah. you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, <laughs> but um, if you don't mind me asking, and primarily I ask this when, I mean, in my role as a financial planner, but what's your earliest memory of money? Is anything connected to bikes or, I mean, how was money growing up? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't bad. I think for me, uh, I was, it's hard to, I suppose it's hard to say, isn't it? Because when you're young, your parents, or at least my parents, do a good job of kind of looking after me and making sure I don't have to worry about that kind of things. Yeah. I always had like dinner money and stuff like that. I was never, never really going short. Um, and they always did what they could to like make sure we had a good time when we went away on holiday or anything like that, which I suppose in some ways I'm, we were lucky that we were able to go on holiday because uh, some people aren't that privileged, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I I wouldn't say I, we have a struggle with money. So the way you're brought up, is that influence? I mean, now you're living, you're renting your own flat. You've got a, yeah. your job with a professional cycling team. Yeah. And you're, and you're also doing lots of other things um, like your, your business, your. Yeah. Yeah. We, I've haven't, got we haven't spoken, we haven't spoken about that, have we? So I'm just wondering if, you know, for most people who are full-time professional athletes, you know, kind of pretty knackered doing that. I mean, but yeah. you've, you've taken it to another level with what you're doing in your, in, in your yeah. I mean, rest of your it, life. I think for that, for me, that's half looking at my career past cycling. Yeah. And at, the, at the same time, the financial situation with British teams is not enough to save enough money to live off post-career. So it's a way of getting by at the same time. Yeah, um, and obviously doing something I enjoy as well is quite rewarding. Yeah. So if I can manage it, training and racing and and working as well, then I'll do it as much as I can. Yeah. And how did you get into doing that? I mean, what what made you think that you were going to to do this? Because I mean, so just for the benefit of our listeners, Tom sent me an amazing presentation pack prior to us having this conversation today about what he does and what you can do for potential sponsors but also the way you present yourself, the whole marketing. I, lo- I love the way that you'd taken our corporate colours and in- incorporated them in the presentation. I mean, that's it's a, it's a small touch, but it's a very professional touch. And, uh, you know, well, first of all, congratulations to you for doing that. But having this whole, you know, this this, this business that you can come and ride with you, right? That's uh, And coaching and setting bikes up and all that sort of stuff. I mean, what, how, did you, yeah. how did you put that together? <laughs> Talking on the presentation, firstly, that's something I've never been taught I've kind of just worked my way through my career, talking to sponsors, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. That gave my interest in the marketing and social media side of things because obviously it's very important to get the ROI for the sponsor, especially as an individual athlete where you can't offer as much as, say, a team. So, And then that kind of led into my business ride where I'd offer corporate ride outs to firstly sponsors yeah. and then obviously other business as well where we can get a group of people together whether it be a business networking ride just a, a breakfast ride something like that just to bring people together bring employees close together or even clients from different companies together cycling is the new golf as they say and if we can get more people on bikes then that's that's what we want fantastic music to my ears anyway <laughs> given, given i'm married to a golfer <laughs> <laughs> so of all the things you've done so far, what's given you the biggest source of pride? What was it, what was your proudest moment so far? I think cycling side of things, I've probably got quite a few, but I think the Commonwealth Games is probably the biggest. Yeah. Um, to be able to go there has always been a dream to represent the Isle of Man anyway. And to be able to do that on a massive stage, actually go there with a chance of winning the race 
and going there with my brother as well. It was just, yeah, it kind of all came together. It was a really nice moment for, for, for me and my family, I suppose. Fantastic. Did you go, did you do the opening ceremony? We did. Yeah. We, yeah. we walked around and waved to everyone blinded by the lights. Um, <laughs> But yeah, yeah, there's some good memories from that three weeks we were in Australia. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, and um, you have to be pretty resilient, I would think, doing what you do as a day job, you know, getting on a bike, beating yourself up, falling off, having to fix your, get yourself fixed and carrying on. And So what would be your um, number one business tip for, for any aspiring entrepreneur? Because I can see what you've done is pretty entrepreneurial on the on the on the side there. I try to. I'm on my own. I'm the worst critic at some points because I always think I can be doing something better. But at the same time, I like to think that I've got myself or worked my way up and and learn more about what I'm. I would like to do. I suppose. Yeah, post cycling because at the moment, I I suppose I still see myself as a as a full-time cyclist, obviously with things going on the side and, and everything else. But yeah, my, my cycling is almost my main focus with those things on the side, which I want to put a lot more time into once I stop riding professionally and don't have to train as much. Going back to your question of the biggest tip, um, I suppose just do what you enjoy. I suppose it's the same in sport and in business. Um, If you enjoy something, you're going to put all your passion and everything into what you want to do. It's been the same. It's yeah. For me, in my cycling career and my business career, I've kind of figured out what I want to do and what I enjoy yeah. and kind of pursued that and put effort into it. And I suppose that's all you can do really, isn't it? And if it, if it pays off, then even better. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, fantastic. That's a, that's a great tip. What do you do to relax Tom when you're, cause isn't there a saying, isn't there? If I can remember it when you're a cyclist, don't stand if you can sit and don't sit if you can lie down. That's the one, isn't it? Is that's that, the one yeah okay so when you're doing the lie down thing what <laughs> <laughs> so go um, to, uh, what, what do you do to relax how, how do you keep your life in balance to be honest I don't I don't tend to relax too much like I wouldn't like have a day in bed or a day on the sofa or anything like that I'm not that type of person I always have to be doing something whether that's just me and my ADHD or whatever but uh, I like to just listen to music sometimes uh, a lot of the time it will be on the bike, even if it's just an easy day. I'll just go ride my bike, listen to music, and just kind of switch off that way more than have a full day of relaxation. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you tell me what you think? I mean, you you, you you come back to the Isle of Man a lot. I know. Yeah. When you can, well, what do you think the best things about living here when you can get back? I, I try and explain this to people when when I'm riding and stuff. It's like oh, you're from the Isle of Man. It's such a long way. Huh. Uh, this and that, but it's like it's something different when as soon as I go home when I go on the boat get off the boat you just feel like you're in a different world almost I just feel like I can switch off and relax there more than I can anywhere else whether that's because I see it as an escape from because all I've ever done really on the Isle of Man is train there's no pressure there there's just me and my own mind I suppose and whether I see that as some sort of weird switch off or whatever, but it's just it's just a beautiful place. I love coming home to to the Isle of Man. I'm sure you'll agree, like on a beautiful summer's day, there's nowhere better to be than the Isle of Man. That's right. No, there isn't. And it's very yeah. green. Very green, yeah. Yeah. I've been lucky enough to do many, many laps of it on my bike and see the best views. So yeah, I love yeah. some of the YouTube videos that you've done of your rides. So they were great. And they've had loads of hits, haven't they? Like 10,000 views on a U- <laughs> one YouTube video. Yeah, that's amazing. That's really, really innovative. Nobody does that. Yeah, well, that was kind of something I did in lockdown, really. It was, I don't know really why I did it, but um, it, it kind of was somewhere to channel some mental energy, I suppose, when I wasn't yeah. training. Well, I was still training, but there was nothing to train for. So yeah. it was kind of a bit, not aimless, but it was something to focus on and I enjoyed doing the videos and it helped me learn a new skill uh, which I can like put into my social media stuff and yeah it's actually talking now I've actually realized how much that I used to talk in slang or just be a bit short with my words but now I I try and speak a little bit clearer English (laughs) (laughs) Um, which always helps when I'm doing things like this really 
Oh, you're doing great. Yeah, yeah, you have to have a list of words, don't you? Different, different sort of adjectives. No, that's great. That's great. No, that's outstanding. That's astonishing. That's you know. Yeah, that's it. I used I used to say like <laughs> a lot. I think like like and obviously like is the typical Manx one. I think isn't it? Though? Yeah, it is like. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Basically, that's the other one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what would you say are the main things that main challenges though? that the Isle of Man faces from, from your perspective? Um, I suppose it can be a big stretch of water sometimes, can't it? Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Especially from my perspective as a sports person, sometimes it's difficult, um, not just talking about cycling, but other sports. And from what I've spoken to young sports people on the Isle of Man about, is being able to compete at a high level enough. For example, I, I did a Sports Aid Academy day. I think it was sometime last year. And there was like local football players and hockey players, um, young, and they were saying that they just they want to get away and test themselves against uh, like higher level opposition. Not to say yeah. that the Isle of Man hasn't got higher level sports people. It's team sports. It's a lot more difficult, isn't it? You need yeah, it's a lot difficult. A much, they much more. They wanted more broad. of a challenge to bring their level up. I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With with, with cycling, we're lucky in a way because we're quite isolated with our training. You can train by yourself. You can train with a group. On Zwift. Yeah, on Zwift. You have many different avenues of improving yourself. But for, well, there was never that actually when I was younger. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was like... I had my first go this week. It's amazing. I've got to get one yeah. of those machines. Oh. I say, you'll be, you'll be addicted now. <laughs> I'll be thinner, hopefully. <laughs> but yeah, I suppose the travel is a big thing. Yeah. Like, like I say, I've been lucky enough to have support from the Steam Packet throughout my career which right. made things a little bit easier yeah it's very um, it's very helpful financially side and stress side really because if, if I had an event say on the weekend and I didn't know I was doing it luckily I had someone I could message at the steam packet on the Saturday morning and they'd be able to book it for me to go away yeah um, stuff like that that just you don't think about really um, like if you were to have to do that usually then mm. it'd be a stress wouldn't it but yeah no absolutely would well, no, that's 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 um, that's that's a fair point. Any obvious solutions or opportunities you can you can see to that? Not really. I mean, we are where we are, aren't we? But um, yeah, there's pros and cons, I suppose, to it, isn't there? Because we are lucky that we have the facilities on the Isle of Man. Hmm. Um, maybe not all the facilities that we would need, but enough to get high level athletes. Obviously, we've shown that in Ireland Games, Commonwealth Games, that we produce great athletes. Oh, cycling particularly um, yeah um, and I think the cycling side of things is just a sign of the terrain and the riders that have grown up here as well we all kind of push each other um, every, every training ride is almost like a race sometimes in the winter um, <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's a great place to train and I love I love training on the Isle of Man um, but yeah I suppose <laughs> I've gone off on a little bit of a tangent here, but no, yeah. no, at all. I'm, I'm thinking about the. Um, I mean, I, I cycle a bit, not as much as I used to, but seeing the A group as it is, the Manx posse that go out, and it oh, just yeah. it yeah. just looks insane. The speed that it goes at. It's great. Typically, four or five professionals will be in there, along with all the local wannabes um, trying yeah. to keep up. No, it's. It's great that actually I, I pretty much whenever I'm home in the winter I'll ride with those guys every week and it's great because they actually go faster in the winter than they do in the summer <laughs> so, so so like for us when we're having like our downtime and then we come back and we're like suffering a little bit a little bit overweight not trained for like three weeks you come back and they're all absolutely flying it's great to get you back into shape Long may Sconner be on the front. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, Sconner is always there, always at the front driving it on. Next, I know you've got the Tour of Britain, haven't you? Two and a half weeks, yeah. you've mentioned it. And and longer term? Looking to next year, obviously Tour of Britain's a goal again. I'm st- I'm probably going to stay with St. Prune for next year. Um, okay. we've, we've got a, kind of a good little partnership going on. Yeah, and you've got um, some hopes there. You were saying that you can't quite mention yet but things that might develop there. Yeah, potentially um, something a little closer to home. Um, probably not until after the Commonwealth Games, at least, um, and then we'll see about that. But yeah, there's good things in progress for me as a rider in business with the team. Um, so yeah, kind of looking to tour Britain in two and a half weeks. Uh, really excited to 
to race that eight days of uh all you have to do the- all you have to do is stay on Mark Cavendish's wheel just saying well that was actually my plan so <laughs> 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 yeah yeah stay around Cav and you won't be too far out of uh out the front will you so yeah yeah I'm really looking forward to it it'll be like like I say, great to race alongside him. Well, Van Art as well. There's a rumor. I don't know if it'll be released before. Oh my, really? This um, no, no. Well, Van Art's been announced, but there's a rumor Matthew Van der Poel is going to be there as well. Oh so, wow! Um, That'd yeah, be something it'll be, else. It'll definitely be against some of the world's best riders. So um, you'll have a choice of three wheels. That's it. Yeah, it's going to be great, and and something I've always aspired to do. I've not actually had the opportunity to ride the Tour of Britain yet in my career. So, yeah, oh, it's, fantastic. It's a massive, um, yeah, it's a massive achievement even to be selected or pre-selected for the team. So yeah, I'm really excited for it. I'm excited for you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's going to be a hard eight days, but it'll, it'll yeah. be worth it. And if you don't mind me asking, how old are you now? I mind you asking. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I'm 28 now. Yeah. So getting right. on a little bit. Okay. So how long are you going to, how long are you going to give it in your professional career as a cyclist? Do you have, are you going to, are you going to put a time, time limit on it or are you, you're going to keep going? And how old? Is, Cap's is 36, some, isn't he? It's 36. Yeah. This is something I've thought about really, because I don't think I'll ever stop cycling. Even if, even no. if I re- retire, so to speak. So whether I take a step back and not commit so much to training, but still race is a possibility racing with, for a smaller team as a bit of a, road captain leader in some way helping out younger riders uh, yeah. that could be a possibility working within the sport still um, I just don't really know yet I think I've got enough in the next 12 to 12, 12 to 18 months to focus on to keep me yeah. keep me motivated um, and then I suppose we'll see after that really well there's still riders w- w- winning stages of the Tour de France and they're 40 aren't they that's it they say 30 is your prime so who knows it'll yeah. either be the It'll be the make or break, maybe. <laughs> well, I know what, what I'm rooting for. So you certainly deserve to succeed. Okay, so here's a couple of fun questions for you. Um, got any books, sources of inspiration that you'd recommend? Or, I mean, what what, what do you... Um, actually, I read a really good book. It was... Uh, well, I've actually read, read a couple of books, actually. Ant Middleton's SAS Who There's Wins one. Okay. And I actually can't remember the first one I read. It's the same sergeant. They're on They're on the show together. Okay. Oh, I have it by the side of my bed and I still can't remember it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, th- those two, it's kind of, I've always, I was saying it to someone the other day, it's, I, I'm interested in that mindset because I always watch that show and I'm like, I like to think I'm quite mentally strong, but then I would like to put myself in that position where you're so uncomfortable that you have to go through your comfort zone. So I find, yeah, their mindset uh, okay. really really kind of intrigues me so that's I suppose the main reason I've read those books so how long was your ride today Tom talking about going above your comfort zone <laughs> uh just for well four and a half hours in the end it was right okay so yeah. an easy an easy day then yeah it was 2,000 meters of climbing up into North Yorkshire so yeah it wasn't too bad brilliant <laughs> yeah it's going to be um well that's uh probably an easy ride compared to what it's going to be in the tour print yeah okay starts in cornwall ends in aberdeen doesn't it it, it does that's a long way so sure we'll, is. Uh, we'll see so um what's your favorite quote have you got one there was one actually it's probably not a very good one it's just the one that or oh, it sticks in my mind is um the one from eddie Merckx. just riding ride as much as or as little as you like but just ride. Well, so. it, would, it would seem very fitting f- for your choice in That's it, vocation yeah. and career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's even if you give up being a professional cyclist at some point, it sounds like you're going to move into this life of being a, a co- uh, yeah, commercial, I'd, I'd, commercial I'd, I cyclist. Yeah, I think I'd like to work. Yeah. I'd like to work in sport, um, whether it takes me into the professional side of things or into the industry then who knows but yeah I think it's it's something that I've been so passionate about for so much of my life that it's I'm always I would say bound to enjoy it and yeah I mean I'm mean, still enjoying it so far so who knows yeah it's uh it's, it's certainly a unique lifestyle where you have to continually suffer and beat yourself up and still have a smile on your face so well done for doing that <laughs> so where can people go to learn more about you um, and what you're doing I mean, I know you've got a number of social media ch- channels. What's what's your sort of most active? 
Um, I suppose I'm, I'm pretty active across all social media channels. More my business side of things on LinkedIn. Okay. So obviously my name, Tom Mazzoni. Um, that, that's something I've been working on over the last few years. Obviously making connections um, with people in sport, people outside of sport, other business people to try and better myself, I suppose, in that aspect. Um, and then sport inside of things, um, obviously the the usual ones, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. I'm Tom Bazzoni on all three okay. of them. Well, we'll put notes for the, all those in, in the show notes so that um, our listeners can go and check it out. But um, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to to talk to me today, Tom, in the middle of your touring the UK and doing your, your various rides. And uh, <laughs> um, and good luck. The best of luck will be watching you on the telly. Thank all, you very it's all, much. It's all, it's all on TV, isn't it? In, yeah. Uh, in two and a half weeks. That's it. Yeah. We're watching out for you. Yeah. I, be- I believe it'll be live on Eurosport and ITV. So yeah, we'll be yeah, watching. If you're watching, I'll try and give you a wave. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you very <laughs> Thank much. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for listening to this episode of Island Influencers from Thornton Chartered Financial Planners. To find out more and for useful links, visit thorntonfs.com slash podcasts.